Hello, my name is Leon Menezes. I'm a consultant radiologist and a nuclear medicine physician at the Institute of Nuclear Medicine at UCL and here in the Bart's Heart Centre. This series of talks from the British Nuclear Cardiology Society we've recorded is to give you the basic grounding in nuclear cardiology, the applications, the technology and the evidence. We hope you find them interesting and useful. In this talk I'm going to discuss the mugger. The mugger is a scan that assesses LV ejection fraction. One of the problems with the scan is that it actually goes by many names. Mugger stands for multiple gated acquisition, which really could do for a variety of tests. It's also known as equilibrium ventriculide radiography or equilibrium radiculonuclide angiocardiography. It is one of the oldest non-invasive tests and indeed the first test there was for non-invasively assessing the LV ejection fraction, otherwise you'd have to do an invasive angiogram. The development of echo and then cardiac MRI has meant that this study is performed less often, however it still has a role where we need to have a reproducible serial assessment of LV function. But that isn't all it could do. Uh, the first pass method, which involves scanning a bolus of an injected radio tracer as it, on its first transit or pass through the heart, can assess both RV and LV function, as well as intracardiac shunts. And the exercise stress mugger, uh, using an bicycle ergometer, was the first stress imaging test, looking for fall of L in LV ejection fraction during stress to document um, ischemic heart disease. The process is one of in vivo blood labelling. The patient attends, a venton is placed, and they're first injected with tin pyrophosphate. This will cause the radio tracer that's about to be injected, the free technetium per technetate, to stick to the red blood cells because that will be reduced in the presence of tin and bind with the haemoglobin inside the red cells. This is the simplest and most widely used method there has been uh, also in vitro red cell labelling, however, the relative lower labelling efficiencies of the technique is outweighed by its ease and, uh, and it's entirely adequate for clinical purposes. Imaging happens with the patient underneath the gamma camera, ECG stickers are placed, the gamma head needs to be tilted around 45 degrees LAO, plus or minus some caudal tilt, um, and the scan is acquired over some minutes. The scan is gated, hence the ECG leads, and the gating is done either into 16 or 32 bins. What's a bin? You divide up the RR interval into these sections, these bins, and data from the corresponding percentage point of the RR interval is summed and added together over several heartbeats. Now ECG gating, like Every modality is affected by atrial fibrillation and arrhythmia. If the, if the variance of the heart rate is too great, then the gating will not work. And you set a fairly tight acceptance windows on that, on that around plus or minus 10% to limit uh, those errors. So the image you uh, obtain is a single planar image, a stacked image, a 2D representation of the 3D structure of the patient's chest, akin to a chest radiograph except with the LAO angled tilt, such that you're looking straight down the long axis of the left ventricle with good separation of the right and the left ventricles. And the process is to draw a region of interest around the LV cavity at end when you have the greatest counts within the LV ventricle, because you have the greatest amounts of red blood cells, and a region of interest around end when you have the, the minimum amount of counts. To correct for background, another region of interest is drawn um, beside the heart, um, you must be careful when you place that to avoid the spleen. And then the ejection fraction is simply the end diastolic counts minus the end systolic counts over the end diastolic counts minus the background. So there's no geometry, there's no other mathematics, you're simply looking at the count in within your regions of interests. So here's an example of that in practice. You can see the heart beating and the region of interest drawn around the left ventricle and the need therefore for good separation between the left and right ventricles and the background uh, count region of interest flicks into the field of view as it appears. So if you were to judge that image there you would assess that this was a pretty good uh, preserved ejection fraction. 
There are sources of error. The background activity can be hard to estimate accurately and the reproducibility of that region of interest can be variable. Uh, the positioning of the patient is key and there can be overlap of other cardiac chambers which will interfere with the system counts. Um, so good positioning is key. And it's certainly true that photons which arrive arrive from deeper inside the left ventricle are more likely to be attenuated and or scattered than those arising more anteriorly than the left ventricle which would may cause some errors. Regional LV function can also be assessed with the mugger by plotting on a pixel by pixel basis the counts in the ventricular region of interest. Those counts can then be fitted to a cosine curve which shows the amplitude, the depth of the curve and the phase, the timing between the peaks. And if you plot a histogram of those phase angles, the width of the distribution is a measure of contractile dyssynchrony. How accurate is the mugger? Uh, the values obtained are typically within 5%, slightly less than other modalities. And that's because of the atrial overlap acts as a dead space in the volume. Because you have the atria behind the ventricle and, and the mugger is reproducible within 5% or between observers and between different time point acquisitions. So when do we need serial reliable measurement of LV ejection fraction? And this is what the role of the mugger in modern day clinical practices and that is in the uh, monitoring of cardiotoxicity of chemotherapy. This is data uh, from Bart's Heart Centre um, presented in abstract form at last year uh, showing the coefficient of variability for LV volumetric assessment measurement uh, using three modalities, cardiac MRI, echo, 2D and 3D and the mugger. And this data showed that cardiac MRI has got the least coefficient of variability, however the runner-up is the mugger and echo and at 2D and 3D came third and fourth respectively. Moreover, the coefficient of variance for mugger is very high at 95 on, um, on akin to that of cardiac MRI, whereas the variance for echo measurements was much greater. So with the mugger, you have a robust reproducible uh, tool for measuring the LV ejection fraction. This is just an example of the output that the computer software might demonstrate. You have serial panels of the cardiac cycle, um, phase and amplitude images and the histograms thereof, and essentially a panel demonstrating where the region of interest around the ventricle was drawn and the background, and regional wall motion abnormalities on this radial plot and the ejection fraction. Here's an example of a case. In fact, we've seen this one already. Here's a normal ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is measured at 68%. However, compare that with this individual, a patient undergoing chemotherapy for breast carcinoma. And their injection fraction is impaired. The injection fraction here is measured at 41%. And to illustrate the value over time, this is a patient, again, a lady with breast cancer, uh, presumably receiving doxorubicin, baseline scan on the left hand side, a year later after her chemotherapy and you can see the LV function has deteriorated. Baseline injection fraction was 53% after chemotherapy 43%. That's a 10 point percentage drop. The next question is well what is cardiotoxicity? How what does the change need to be? And there are a variety of definitions of that. This is pulled from a, a paper where showing that it's a relative decrease or decrease from the baseline and the definitions have changed over time and are variable. Um, but what will happen is that most chemotherapy regimes will have a program of serial assessments planned during the chemotherapy and chemotherapy will be switched or skipped if the ejection fraction falls between falls during the regime. So this is an example a uh, prescription of LB function assessment um, when giving doxorubicin and when to discontinue and similarly here's a patient receiving a, a monoclonal antibody therapy with baseline and repeat assessments every three months as, as prescribed by the protocol. Of course, with the burgeoning interest in cardio-oncology, serial monitoring and accurate monitoring of, of LV ejection fraction is uh, one of the mainstays of the cardiologist's 
role in the care of these cancer patients and therefore it's important that you have a good understanding of how cardiotoxicity is assessed by oncologists uh, when these patients present to you and there you will see the, the role and the benefit of doing the mugger. Thank you. Please comment below if you have any questions. If you found that interesting, please like and subscribe for more lectures. If you'd like to know more, follow the BNCS on Twitter and visit our website. Thank you.